Hello everyone and welcome back to Propway. So in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to make your very own Stormbreaker from Marvel's new movie, Thor Love and Thunder. This prop in particular was requested by a few of you guys, maybe two or three people, I don't remember the exact number, but a few of you wanted to see it, so I decided it was finally time to show you guys how to make your very own. And as you can see to my left, this is Stormbreaker. And it is a full-size Stormbreaker made mostly out of EVA foam with a PVC pipe as the handle. And let me tell you guys, I am super excited to share this tutorial with you guys because it is one of my favorite props in the Marvel Universe. I think it looks so good. I think my Stormbreaker actually came out very nicely and I hope with this tutorial, you guys are able to make one for yourself. And I'm super proud of it. There's no 3D printing, no power tools needed, no pouring molten steel. It's just EVA foam and a pipe and some acrylic paint. And before we get on with the tutorial, I want to thank Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. And now, let's get on with the tutorial. So here I am just freehand sketching the main part of the axe on some 12 millimeter thick foam. And here you can see I'm just cutting that out with an X-Acto knife. And basically to get the right thickness, I'm just gonna trace this out a couple times and stack them together. So as you can see here, these pieces just stack together like that. I'm gonna use some of this contact cement and I'm gonna place it onto one side of the ax head and then place it on the other side and once that dries for a little bit, you can start sticking them together. And basically when you're done, you should have three pieces stacked together. And now before I go on, I wanna show you guys another awesome prop that I made from the game Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is one of the biggest mobile games out there right now. There are over 600 different characters, or champions as I call them, and they each have unique abilities and different artifacts that you can equip. In the game, you can fight different bosses, you can do campaign battles, and my personal favorite, player versus player arena matches. One of my favorite champions is Royal Guard, who as you can see here, is an absolute beast with his heavy attacks and skills. And one of my favorite looking weapons in the game is this staff right here, wielded by the champion, Archmage Helmet. I just absolutely love the lightning bolts coming off this thing and the electricity coming off of it just makes it look so cool and powerful. This prop right here is all handmade and hand painted and I think it's gonna make the perfect display piece here in my workshop. There is so much going on in Raid and right now they are running a special Deliana Chase event where you can get the brand new legendary champion, Deliana, just by logging in and playing. Guys and girls, this is the best time to get started in Raid. And if you click the link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen, you'll get a free starter pack worth almost $40. We're talking three free champions at once. Misericord, Tiger Soul, Romero, plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force XP Brews, and 10 Spirit Brews. That is huge. And all this treasure will be waiting for you right here. The gifts keep coming. All new players, listen up. Once you're in-game, just enter promo code MYDELIANA to get your hands on everything. Simple. Get 50 XP brews to instantly get your legendary hero, Deliana, to max level 50, as well as a ton of silver. So everyone, don't wait around. Download Raid today. And now, back to Stormbreaker. And now to make the actual blade of the axe, I'm going to use this 6mm foam. And again, I'm just sketching out kind of that blade and I'm going to start cutting this out. And as you can see here, I'm cutting it at a little bit of an angle. It's actually a lot of an angle. You want to kind of get the, the biggest bevel that you can on this piece. And you're going to bevel all sides of it just like this. And you're going to want to cut out two pieces. And basically that bevel is going to allow you to glue it together and kind of get a nice sharp, relatively sharp point on the edge of that blade. So now I just use more of this contact cement. And I'm going to stick that blade to that main head of the axe. And that's what one side will look like. And then you take the other side of the blade and glue it onto the other side. And now I'm going to add some contact cement right in the middle of those two blades. And then you want to give it a, a little bit of time to dry and once it's tacky you can start compressing it all together. And this is why using foam is nice because it is flexible and you can get those nice bends which will make it a lot easier to glue together. And 
And now there's a little opening here at the top of the blade, top and bottom of the blade. So I'm just going to cut out some more of this 6mm foam. And here I am just cut it at a bevel and I use some contact cement to close that off. And I want to do that to both sides. And the main body of that axe head is now done. So now I'm going to start making the piece that connects the axe head and kind of the back of that hammer. So here I just cut out this octagon piece. And I'm going to cut out two of those pieces and they're going to be kind of sandwiched around another middle piece which I'm cutting out here. So you want to take the big piece, add some contact cement, then add the small piece in the middle and then kind of finish it off with the other big piece so you should have a sandwich looking piece like this. And here I'm just adding some contact cement and that is gonna attach right to that axe head like this. And I'm just gonna use some hot glue to kind of reinforce that seam So now here I'm tracing out a template piece that's going to be used for the back of the Stormbreaker. And you're going to want four of those pieces like this. And now I'm going to cut out these kind of one inch wide strips. And here you can see I am cutting it at an angle so you get a nice bevel on all the pieces like this. And basically this is going to be joining all of those other larger pieces that we just cut out. So with some contact cement you can combine those pieces. And you're going to want to do this all around it. And then once, you, once you're finished, you should end up with kind of a square piece that'll look just like this. And now you can combine that piece to that middle piece of the axe. And now Stormbreaker is finally starting to come together. And as usual I just use contact cement. You guys can use hot glue or super glue. I just find contact cement to be a lot stronger. It makes this seams a lot tighter. And I, th I find it's just you know a lot easier to work with for the most part. Okay, so now you should have the main hammer and axe head up to this point. Um, as you can see, this is still missing that last kind of cover piece on the end and a lot of the detailing. But I just wanted to kind of show you guys how big this thing should be. And obviously, if you print the template smaller, you can make it smaller. Or if you print it bigger, you can get a bigger hammer head. Let's continue the build. So now I'm going to be stacking two of these 10 millimeter pieces together. And I just, I just stack them together with some contact cement. Now for this next part, I've actually never done this before, this technique, and I'm going to see if it works. So basically, I'm going to be trimming off foam with a blade to get the nice, you know, beveled shape. And we will see how that works. So here I just take my blade and I'm cutting these edges at an angle on all four corners first. And you can see, you can start to see those beveled edges. And then now I take the blade and start cutting the longer edges of it. And when you're done, you should have a nice beveled end that looks like this. But some of the ends were a little bit rough, so I took a sanding block just to kind of clean it up a little bit. And now to work on some more detailing, I'm going to cut out this rectangular strip on the side. And here I'm cutting it at an angle on both edges like this. And once you pull that piece out, you should have a nice little detailed valley on the side of that hammer. And we're going to do that onto both sides. So now I'm just kind of freehanding some of the details that are going to go onto the axe head. This is using two millimeter thick foam. 
and I just apply it with some super glue. And if you have a little bit of extra hanging off the end, just take some scissors and cut that off. And now to do some more detailing, I'm cutting out these little strips here with some more two millimeter thick foam. And this piece just kind of wraps around the edge of that hammer piece. And again, I just use super glue. And here are some more strips for some more detailing that are gonna get super glued right around those valley edges. So here I'm just gluing that into place and you're gonna have four of those pieces and do it all around the hammer. And you should have something that looks like this at this point. Here's just some more detailed pieces using two millimeter foam. These are just gonna get super glued to the top and bottom of the hammer head. And now here I'm just freehand sketching all of the detail lines on the X. And also on the side of the hammer, there's some cool lettering. So I was looking at more reference photos of the back of the hammer, and this piece actually is not accurate. It, it's really not a piece that sticks out. It actually looks like it's a little bit inset. So I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna cut out this circle and then push it in enough that it's, you know, inset by a couple millimeters. So here you can see I'm just cutting all around that circular piece. And once it's cut out, just push it back in and have it be a little bit inset. And I just take another piece of foam and I just glue it to it. So here, going back to the detail lines, I just use an X-Acto knife to score all of those lines, which is how I do a lot of my detailing. And again, you're not cutting all the way through, you just want to cut a couple millimeters into the foam. And then I take a heat gun and I heat up all of those lines and the entire hammer to heat seal it. But what looks, what happens is that once you add some heat to it, those details are going to open up a little bit. Okay, so now before we get on painting this thing or adding Mod Podge or anything like that, I am going to be building the handle now. I am using a one inch PVC pipe. Okay, so now I'm going to be cutting this using my very handy PVC pipe cutting tool, or you can use a Dremel if you have one or a bandsaw or whatever you have. So here I'm just marking a spot on the pipe. I cut this at about 42 inches, but you guys can cut the length to whatever you think fits better for your Stormbreaker. And now I am cutting out this section at the bottom of the hammer. And basically there's going to be a little gap here that you can glue your pipe into. You could also cut all the way through the hammer and stick the pipe all the way through for more support. But what I like to do is I just kind of drench this in hot glue and I really did, did not hold back because the hot glue will get hard and it'll add a lot of strength to it so you guys can definitely do the same. And now once that's done here you can see me adding some of the primer coat and just painting the final piece, the final hammer head. So after you're done spray painting your Stormbreaker or you know painting it silver by hand or whatever you do, you're going to have a very shiny, clean look depending on what color paint you use. And I personally do not think Stormbreaker should be nice and pristine and that shiny. So what I did was I started weathering the other side and I don't know if you can tell but it looks a little bit more worn down um, compared to this side. So it all depends on what you guys want to do. If you want it to be nice and shiny then you guys can just stop after you're done spray painting it. If you want it to be a little bit more weathered and kind of dirty, I want to show you how I do that right now. I have this bowl of, it's just water and black acrylic paint that I made a mixture of and it's really thin. And all I do here is I'm gonna dip this paper towel just a little bit into this, you know, paint and water mixture. So you're gonna have something like that. And then I just start brushing it on and you know, it's gonna be really thin and kind of really liquidy and watery, which is perfectly fine. And we're just gonna brush it onto the entire piece. Once that has dried for a minute or so, or less than a minute, you're gonna take a clean paper towel and we are just gonna brush off that paint. It kinda gets dulled out a little bit and you leave back 
the black paint inside of these crevices, which is what I personally think looks better. But it's your hammer. You guys can do whatever you want. This is just my suggestion. So once you're done weathering it, you should have something that looks like this. And now I'm taking some of this 6mm foam. And this is just going to be wrapped around the PVC pipe. And you can see I'm just using some contact cement on the edges and I'm going to seal that around the pipe. And I left this bottom open because we're going to add a little flare out piece to make it look more accurate. So here I'm just adding a small piece of foam around it. And then I'm going to use this foam piece to glue to the bottom of the long strip. And then as you can see you, it kind of flares out like a little bell bottom and that makes it look a lot more accurate. So here what I'm doing is I'm just scoring a bunch of random lines into the foam on the handle. And as you can see you're going to get a nice texture like this to make it look like wood and then here I'm heating heating it up with a heat gun and that's going to open up the lines to make it look like wood. So now I just add some of this brown acrylic paint. I just brush it on. Okay, so now that we have painted the handle brown, the final part of this is going to be adding all of the branches that kind of wrap around the middle of the hammer. And what I'm using for that is going to be this backer rod, which is really just these foam rods. As you can see, this foam just squishes. It's just a long strip of that. And basically this is used for kind of sealing your windows and doors to prevent air coming into your house. So I found this at a hardware store and I'm sure you can find something similar. If you can't, they have foam rods on Amazon or you guys can just come up with something completely different. This is what I'm going to use and I think this is really what's going to make this project complete and make it look really accurate to Stormbreakers. So let's finish off this build. So I'm just brushing on some brown acrylic paint and I'm just going to clamp it here to my workbench so that I can kind of paint the rest of it and paint a long strip of it. And here I'm just going to be cutting off short strips at an angle like this. And so I add some hot glue to one end and you stick it to the handle like this. And then you just wrap it around the hammer head and then glue it to the other end of the handle. And we're going to do this a bunch of times to make it look like Groot's arm and to make it look like a bunch of branches that are holding onto the hammer. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Thank you guys so much for watching that tutorial. As always, I truly hope you guys learned something new. I am incredibly happy with how this Stormbreaker came out, and I know for a fact that you guys are going to do awesome with it as well. Just from seeing your photos and videos on Instagram and TikTok, you guys are all super talented, and I am super grateful that you guys follow along with these videos. And I am so grateful for all of your support of Propway this past year. As always, if you guys do build your own Stormbreaker, make sure to tag me on Instagram and TikTok, at Propway and I would love to see your work. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for a lot more content coming up on Propway. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.